Hi there, this is Dr. Eben Osar with the Integrative Movement Institute. Happy Saturday, hope you're having a great day. Hope your week's been great. First, I got, actually I got three things for you. First, I wanna thank everybody down here in Houston, Texas, all, all the responders that got to the electric power, the water, all the people that had power, electric water, and helped other people that didn't have it. So obviously you guys have heard what's going on here in the state of Texas. I've been down here writing, also doing some consulting with my friend and colleagues, Jason and Jackie of Evolution Fitness and Wellness. And my sister Sylvia and my brother-in-law Wayne also live here as well. Luckily when the power went out in my apartment that I've been staying in, I was able to go to my sister's house. They had a generator, so that worked out well. But you know, a neighbor, many neighbors in their neighborhood, they, they you know they called us up and they're like, hey, we have you know our pipes burst. They got water. They have no heat and they got water running down their walls. And so it was really really sad. And but like I said, a lot of people stepped up to help out. And thankfully, the power is restored in quite a few areas, not everywhere. The water is restored, relatively speaking, in a lot of areas. So you know, it really put things into perspective of like how simple things that we take for granted, like having running water, having electricity, you know, getting things done on a regular basis because everything works the way it's supposed to. And we, many times, myself, I'll, I'll talk about myself, we take it for granted. So thank you for everyone that stepped up. Thank you for everybody that's still helping out because a lot of people are still struggling with water damage and, you know, other issues related to what's been happening. So thank you for everybody that, that has been stepping up, helping out, and helping make other people's lives better. That's the first thing. Number two, if you work with older clients, you definitely work with clients that have the forward shoulder position. And in this week, I should say this month's modules, three modules series on Two Anatomy Geeks, Jill and I have been talking about the rotator cuff. That's our, that's our topic because so many, of our, so many of our older clients say, have been told, I should say, they don't say, they've been told that they have a weak rotator cuff. They got the forward shoulder, you must have weak rotator cuff, so you need to strengthen all those external rotators and stretch out all the internal rotators and those tight pecs all pull the shoulder forward. And I want to ask you a question. Is that actually a true statement? And if it is a true statement, how do you know it's a true statement? Because there's only one way you know if your client truly has tight pecs. And how is that? You can't just look at them. You can't just look at the forward shoulder and say, hey, you got tight pecs. Can't do it. I mean, you can do it, but you'd be wrong a lot of the times because a lot of your clients with the forward shoulder actually don't have short, tight pecs. And if you haven't assessed your client, which is why we teach so much assessment as part of our Integrative Movement System Certification Program, we also teach you assessment during our Two Anatomy Geeks series. So today we're discussing the pectoralis major and the subscapularis. Now, obviously, pectoralis major is not a rotator cuff. However, subscapularis is. However, they have both have very similar functions. If you think about the pectoralis major, it comes off three specific areas, clavicle, sternum, and ribs. And they basically, they come this way, fibers come this way, and the fibers go this way to insert into that lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. So don't worry about those words. <laughs> Just put your fingers right here. That's about where your pectoralis major is inserting to. So your pectoralis major can do this, it can do this, and it can also do, if your arm is up here, it can do this, like if you're throwing a ball, right? Or you're swinging a tennis racket or playing golf. It will help you move your arm into extension from a flexed position. Now your subscapularis comes from, stick your finger right in here. So this is your, this front side of your scapula. Your subscapularis sits inside that subscapular fossa, so that inside of the scapula. It also runs out this direction, but rather than going to the lateral lip, it's underneath, it goes to the lesser trochanter. Uh, not trochanter, that's in your hip. That's a tubercle of your humerus. So that's out here too. So if you put your finger right out here, so the biceps tendon is right here in the front. And then if you go over here, the lesser tubercle is right there. So it's also very similar, just deeper. And what, it, it, what that muscle will do, it will also adduct your shoulder. It will also internally rotate your shoulder. It will also help you bring your arm in horizontal adduction across your body like that. So it will also assist in all those different positions. However, one's deep, one's superficial. If you've heard us, listen to us, if you've been part of Two Anatomy Geeks, you know there's a difference between superficial and deep muscles. What's the biggest difference? Superficial muscles, their primary job is to move your shoulder, 
to move your shoulder into different positions and to do high levels of stable stability, give you high levels of stabilization. So like for example, during a push-up, you better hope your pec major is working really, really well. Now what's the subscapularis doing? Well, it's really controlling the ball and socket joint. It's allowing the ball to stay on the socket and centrated or centered. The ball stays centrated in that socket so that when you're doing all these big movements, throwing a ball, playing tennis, grabbing your children, you're able to keep that ball centered in the socket. Now, let's go back to our forward shoulder. Forward shoulder position. Does that mean they have a tight pec? Not, you don't know that unless you've assessed. Super easy assessment to do. Put your client up to the wall, back and hips against the wall. Have your clients come out this direction and then open up their arms this direction and see, can they get their shoulder against the wall? So you look at me, my whole shoulder's against the wall, my back's against the wall. So even though I have a slight forward shoulder, it's not the pecs, okay? From the side, it looks kind of looks like this. So back and hips against the wall, arm up like this, arm them straight out to the side, and if the arm is flat and the back of the shoulder is against the wall, and that's not tight pecs that's doing it, there's other muscles, and if you're part of Two Anatomy Geeks, you know those other muscles that will pull the shoulder forward that aren't the pecs. Here's why you need to know that. You're like, so what, Dr. Osir? I'll just stretch the pecs and it'll still help them. Except that it probably won't. Because if you don't have pec tight pecs and you keep stretching them like I did for years because that's what physical therapists told, told me to do. Oh, you got the forward shoulder, Evan. You got, a, you know, you got impingement syndrome of your shoulder. You know, you've, been, you've been heavy lifting. You got to stretch those pecs out. So they have me do tons of this kind of stuff. Stretch, 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 stretch. Do tons of this stuff. Wall angels, squeeze back and really squeeze up and, and bring your chest up. You see these people doing this crazy stuff like this and does it ever really help? No, you know what it helps do? It helps to bring your chest into extension. It helps to retract your shoulders and it actually helps to bring your shoulders into a worse position. And that's what ultimately tore my shoulder up. I'll talk about that today in Two Anatomy Geeks. You've heard me share my story a little bit before. Because for a lot of your clients, it's not tight pecs, okay? What about the wall angel? Let's just talk about that real quickly. What if you wanna do the wall angel you think your client should be doing? I just consulted with a client online. So Perry came to me. He lives overseas, he's, he's over in Europe, and he had shoulder sur surgery, and his PT is having him do retraction, squeeze, down and back, all that same stuff that physical therapists usually give their clients. Well, Terry's shoulders aren't any better. They're still weak, he still can't get his arms overhead. I took him off all those exercises, I showed him how to do two simple things, and then he's like, oh, my range of motion is so much better. He's like, yeah, but I'm just warmed up. I'm like, dude, we did no warming up. We did no cardio. We did no rowing. We did no running. We did no stretching, but he had more range of motion because I took him off the things. Number one rule, when you have any problem, this is about life, right? Number one problem, you have no running water, right? So the first thing you should look at, do I actually have a problem that's causing my water to leak out? Is it because I have no water or because the water is actually leaking out somewhere? If your pipe, pipe has burst, you have a problem that you need to stop the, the le leaking water before you even address why your water's not coming out of your faucet. So stop the leaking faucet. So when you look at your clients that have chronic tightness, discomfort, or chronic issues, you have to stop them from doing the things that they're doing that are directly contributing to their issues. I had to stop this guy from doing all the things that PT had him doing that, were, that was stopping him from being able to get his arms overhead. That's how he's able to get his arm up overhead after we were done with the session. So. I can't tell you how important that, that little lesson is right there. Stop your clients from doing the things that are jacking them up and many of the things we've all been taught in physical therapy. When I was taught in chiropractic school, when I was taught in many of my rehab semin seminars are directly contrary to what your shoulder must do and how it functions. And if you stop them doing those things, they will actually feel better, move better, and be able to accomplish their health and fitness goals. So what if you want to do the wall angel? Because it's not a bad exercise, it's just the way that people do it that's not so great. Well, first thing, just align them. You see me do this all the time. Align your head and neck, align your thoracopelvic cylinder, then put your back against the wall. Now, remember we talked about, actually we did, we talked about this in Two Anatomy Geese, so let me share this with you. The, the shoulder, even though it can go out straight out in this direction, the scapula is actually in a 30 degree plane from the, from the frontal plane, so that, that's straight out to the side. The scapula is actually angled 30 degrees forward. So if you're doing a wall angel, it's not great to do it from here because now you're all, to get your arms back there, especially your older clients, they have to do, they have to do this right there. That's already jacking them up. So 
keep them in the scapular plane so their elbow will be right here. So when you back them up to the wall, their arm should actually be here, not here. Because if you look at your older clients, they can get their arm back there. So they're like this, doing their wall angels like this, and they're all jacked up. It doesn't help them. And how do you know it doesn't help them? Check the range of motion before and after. And I guarantee you, the range of motion is not better. Try it this way, and then do the range of motion. So long spine, stack the thoracic pelvic cylinder to the best of your client's ability. Put them against the wall. Let me turn you just a little tiny bit. Bring the elbows into that scapular plane, which is right about here. So you breathe in, stay nice and long. Breathe out, reach up overhead. Do not try to put the elbow in the wall. There's no reason, there's no, there's no need to. If your client can, that's fine, but most of your clients can't. Keep them out here in a nice, safe plane, plane of motion, and then work through the range of motion. So breathe in, breathe out, ribs go down, arms go up. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. From here, so again, long spine, Stack that thoracic pelvic cylinder, back up against the wall, breathe in, scapular plane, breathe out. Do not try to get the elbows back against the wall. Breathe in, breathe out. And this becomes a much more effective exercise because what's gonna happen is when I put weights in my client's hands, like this, and they do an overhead press, and that's the plane of motion I'm going to have them press in. So that way they maintain head and neck, they maintain thoracic pelvic cylinder, they maintain a nice pushing and pulling motion, and it's much safer and healthier on the shoulder, and they will, and then when you check range of motion, they're likely going to have improved range of motion. And that's the beauty of understanding functional anatomy. Because you hear people all, all the time say, I don't need to know science. I just need to help my clients move better. They just need to need more mobility. Maybe true. But the difference between being a specialist and a generalist, the difference between people coming to you, seeking you out, and you charging top dollar and getting paid top dollar is the difference between you being a specialist and all those other people that are generalists just trying to give people random exercises and seeing what sticks. And I know that if you're part of our community, you don't want to be a generalist. You want to be a specialist. So the clients that need you, the clients that want you, the clients that respect what you do, they'll find you. But they need to know that you're a specialist. So that's why we share so much of this information with you here in our social media sites. So thank you for what you do for your clients. Hopefully that helped you, helped you understand a little bit more about alignment and how that relates to the rotator cuff. Because again, if you force your clients into these position, it, positions, it may look better, but they're actually not functioning better. So we'll be, we'll be doing much more of that on Two Anatomy Geek, Geeks today. And next week we record these sessions. They're about 90 minutes long, but we always run two hours because we, we, we love sharing this information. Jill and I, Jill Leary, my other, Hello, anatomy geek. I see Rahul is on. Rahul's from India. So he's on a whole and tough. He's 12 hours ahead of us, or 11 hours. He's always on Facebook Live. He's always on Two Anatomy Geeks. And he's also part of our Integrative Movement Specialist Certification Program as well. So I truly appreciate him and all the rest of you that are part of our certification program. If you want to join us for Two Anatomy Geeks, every Saturday at 9 a.m. So if you missed, you missed part one, that was last week. Today's part two. But again, Mary will put the link in this video, or next to this video, below this video, somewhere <laughs> near this video. And we would love to see you as part of it. Even if you can't be on live, watch the recordings. Great, 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 great information. Obviously, I'm biased, but it's a great way to learn anatomy. It's a fun way to learn anatomy. Obviously, Jill's the funner of the two of us. Funner. <laughs> the more fun of the two of us. And we have a great time. We truly, we truly, truly have a great time. It's a great community of people from all over the world. Rahul from India, we have somebody from Israel, um, Thailand, you know, from Europe, plus lots of people here in the U.S. So join us. I mean, it's truly, truly an, an amazing, an amazing community. Lastly, so that's second thing. Lastly, third thing, 23 years, 23 years ago today, I graduated chiropractic college. So my friend from college, she just, she's like, do you, do you remember what happened 23 years ago? I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We graduated chiropractic college today, 23 years ago. Yep, I was 10 years old when I graduated, when I started chiropractic college. <laughs> yeah, bad joke. I'll stick, I'll stick with the anatomy. But truly, 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 you know, I'm blessed to be a chiropractor. I love being a chiropractor. And people are like, you don't really work like a chiropractor. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but whatever. Um, I truly appreciate my education. I truly appreciate all the people that have helped me along the way, from my mentors to the people that said, your stuff is nonsense, posture doesn't matter, corrective exercise doesn't matter, that challenge me, right? 
and most importantly, like our community, like our patients who allow me to practice and learn on them. You know, and, and I, hate to, I hate to say it that way, but it's true, right? You know, for 23 years, I've, I've practiced on clients. You know, sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing, exactly what it needs to be done, and other times I don't. You know, that, that's, that's why they call it practice, because lots of times you're practicing and you're learning so that each day that I'm getting better, you know, I'm, I'm learning more. I'm figuring things out that work better. I'm figuring out things out that don't work so well that I thought should work, and they don't. And you modify, you grow, you adapt. And I'm truly, truly blessed for all the patients across the years, or along the years that, you know, helped me, supported me, and challenged me. The patients that say, hey, you suck, Dr. Oaks, or I'm going somewhere else. But again, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a learning experience. So I'm, I'm truly grateful for, for all the patients that I've had the pleasure of working with in 23 years. And for you guys, part of our community, the health and fitness professionals that, that are just looking to do better things for their clients, that they, they that you guys are out there on the front line every single day, man, working with these clients, helping to empower them, helping to give them things that they can't find somewhere else. And that's why, we, that's why I get so passionate about fitness, the fitness professionals because I started out as a personal trainer before I went to chiropractic school. So, and I did that through chiropractic school. So it, it, it's, you guys are very personal, or I should say I'm very passionate and you guys are very close to, to near and dear to my heart because, because I know that you truly, 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 truly change people's lives. And yesterday I was with, with my friend Jackie and Jason who owned the, the gym and they had a client come in and she bro broke down crying. She's like, you know, my ceiling caved in, you know, like over top of my bed, you know, so her bed's ruined and, and she started crying and, and she talked, but she talked about how much better she's like i was able to carry a 40 pound box she's an older woman she's a nurse actually she, she was like, i was able to pick up and carry a, a box i thought my back was going to go out but she's like she attributed it to the work she'd done with jackie and jason at their facility and i'm like that's why you do what you do you do what you do to help people live their lives and she came in knowing her ceiling is still damaged. She's got water damage. She's got, you know, home damage that she's got to take care of. You know, she's emotionally, you know, um, drained from this whole experience. But she came in and, and was just sharing that story with, with Jackie and Jason. And I was sitting, sitting there listening to it and I almost started crying. So think about the client's lives that you change. That, that they don't even, they don't always come and say to you that you change their lives until something like this happens. But that's why I do what I do. That's why you do what you do. So I want to thank you guys so much for all you do for your clients, for your communities, for your families. And thank you for allowing me to be part of that. Have a great day. If you have any questions or, or anything, or even things that, you know, stories you've heard like that, share them down here. I would love to hear about the, your clients' lives that, that have been transformed by the work that you've done with them, because that's really what we're all about. We're not about the testimonials. We're about changing people's lives by doing really good work and for being, and we're really present for our clients so that they can create their own transformations and in the process do the things that will change their lives, their community's lives, their family's lives. So thank you again. Truly, truly appreciate it. Appreciate you guys and I'm blessed to be part of this profession and part of this community. So thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. Have a great day. We'll see you next time on Integrative Movement Insider. I'm Dr. Evan Osar, 23 years as a chiropractor. Signing off. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Take care.